says himself, praise God. Amen. Aleluya. The grave could not hold him. Gracias, Señor. He's there and everywhere. Amen. He's omniacious, which means he's everywhere. Oh, yes. Alabado. We may look up and praise him and he's there. Amen. But I can look at the sister and see that he's there. I can look at the brother and see right. that he's there. Alabado. I can look at the brother and see that he's there. Amen. I can look at the brother and see that he's there. Amen. Because he dwells inside of us. Yes, he does. So let's not be afraid of the circumstances of life. Let's not be afraid of what the doctors say. Let's not be afraid of bad reports. Because you know what? No matter what happens, it's a win-win situation for the Christian. Amen. No matter what happens, he's always with us. He never said you're not going to have a problem. He never said you wouldn't have troubles. He never said you're not going to have storms. Every time we turned around in the Gospels and we read, there's always a, a storm of brewing. Amen. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have tribulation. But praise be to God. Amen. There's one. Amen. There's a good cheer. There's one that is the overcomer of all. That's Jesus himself. Amen. Oh, he's with you and he's in you and he's around you. Praise God. And, I, I, and, and I, you know why I preach that? I, I want to have a better understanding myself. Praise God. I heard somebody say a long time ago, you know why I preach this? I believe it more myself. And it dawned on me that, you know what? We, we start to believe what we speak. We start to believe what we live, praise God. Amen. You know what is a man thinking? So he is in his heart, praise God. That's right. So we need to Amen. stand up in victory and say, I have been redeemed. I am healed. By I the blood of the Lamb. I am saved. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That precious blood. We need to sing a song about blood tonight. Songs but for the blood. precious blood of the Lamb, <laughs> praise God. Glory to the Lord. I've got Where it. would we be <laughs> without the sacrifice of Jesus no, Himself? Amen. Where would we be? Yeah. That precious blood of Jesus washing away all our, our sins. sins, my sins. The precious blood of Jesus. Amen. That every time He took a strike, it was a healing for you and a healing for me. Yes. Yes. Deliverance for you and deliverance for you. The Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We're going to pray for La those that are sick and those who are lost in a minute. But you know what? Just let's bow our heads, lift up hands, and just Thank give them you, praise Jesus. and honor. We honor pray for you, Lord. Oh, Gracious Lord Jesus. Jesus. God, we glorify your holy name. Lord, we, come we give you, with open you all arms the praise, and Lord Jesus. We thank you for your loving kindness and your praise. God, lead us and keep us from all evil. Dear God, bless us, sinners, and not bless those that are here. And those that aren't here, Lord Jesus, then you bless them. God, we pray. God, we pray. We thank you, brother, for your church, Lord God. We thank you, brother, for the power that you've given every Christian, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you tonight. I praise you tonight. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored. For you are my Lord and my God and my Savior, my Redeemer, my Healer, my Deliverer, Lord. Lord, I praise you tonight. I honor you tonight, Lord God. Lord, I pray that we're going to say Lord God. And Lord, we're going to let you have your way. Let your will be done, not our will, but your will. Lord, Lord, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We in your mighty name, Lord. Hey, in your mighty name. In your mighty name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know what's marvelous? Very humbling. <coughs> a miserable wretch like us is now a son of a living God. Amen. Right. A miserable wretch from where we used to be, we're no longer, we are now children of God. But Brother yes. Herschel, Yes. We can speak to God all the time. Amen. We don't have to make an appointment with the king. We don't have to make an appointment to go through a secretary. We don't have to make an appointment with him at all. He's there at all times with ears open to hear us. Amen. We don't even need a telephone or a cell phone or Facebook or Internet. Because you know what? He's not a far off God. Remember, he dwells where? In us. Hey. Amen. Sometimes I will lift up those hands. Other times I'll just touch myself and say, Lord, you're here. Yes. I can feel you. I can sense you. Alleluia. Praise you, Keith. Thursday night we had such a good service, Brother Sweet Herschel and, uh, brought forth a, a, a good message, Brother. And it was just a. You know what, what's amazing? I, I was just telling Brother Charles, I said, Brother Richard, 
Man, they, they played so good at harmony and sang, and the anointing was here. Let me retract that. The anointing's always here. Right. Whenever his Amen. Is on, the yes. anointing is there. That's right. And when it manifests That's itself, right. when it comes forth, praise God. Oh, it is wonderful. And it was just great. And Brother Richard brought through the, the three songs. You brought one of the best words, brother, that you... I've heard you say, and, I, and I mean that sincerely. I, sh I shared that with four or five other people. Just sometimes comments between songs and, and things. It was just great. And Brother Herschel was doing the same thing. And Amen. He wanted to take a moment. And he stopped, took, took a moment, and I went over there where I normally sit. And then I just laid my Bible down and sat over here and put my <laughs> arm around the gear and let him take off. Praise God. See, we have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. We have to have an ear God to hear. God moves. And God moved that night. Yes, Boy, he did. He a great service. Amen. You know, we could have the same service, service tonight. Over there. I'm sure, John, you had a great service. Praise God. You got a good church over there. See, church is us. Yes. So where we're at, we should have a great service, right? Praise you. You know what? Sometimes I used to say, I'm going to forget about the rest of you. I'm going to go have a great service myself. <laughs> Let's praise God all by ourselves if we have to. We can Amen. We they're packed praising God sometimes. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. We're going to go to the throne of God in prayer. Uh, I was up at the uh, ICU today, this afternoon. Uh, sister Alma Carter, most of you know her. Sister Alma's yes. sister, Debbie Wooten, is in ICU. They took her. She was in the hospital for the last several weeks, but they took her to ICU last night about 2.30. I went up there to uh, pray with her. She wasn't that responsive, but they said she is improving. Uh, so keep her lifted up in prayer. Her name is Debbie Wooten. Uh, God, I feel, is already touching her. Praise God. But let's continue to Amen. thank God for touching Amen. her and, 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 and lifting her up out of this sickness itself. Uh, Sister Mary was in this morning, as I told several people. And for the ones that were here, she uh, she was struggling moving a little bit. She really, really was. And we sat over there, and she said she was going to do her best to make it back tonight. But, you know, let's lift her up in prayer. Amen. We sang Amazing Grace this morning. And she led the song Amazing Grace from her seat. And as bad as that woman hurt, Brother John, she still was able to sing Amazing Grace. And she was hurting this morning. So let's lift her up. Amen. And continue to lift Carol Smith's sister up. Her name is Sally. They had put her in hospice. She got real bad off, and the sister, the daughter, demanded that she go back to a hospital. And the daughter took her to another hospital, another doctor. You know what that report was? If she's taking care of properly, she's got life yet. She didn't understand why the other hospital had put her in hospice and why they were even doing what they're doing. Hey. Sometimes it's good to get a second yeah. opinion. But you know what? When we go to God, we don't need a second opinion. Amen. <laughs> His opinion is final, praise God. Amen. Let's pray for her. Her name is Sally. Let's pray for her. Talk to Brother Warren. He did get released from the hospital. Uh, I went up to see him, too, but they said he already was gone, so... But I talked to him on the phone. He's struggling. Every week he's been in the hospital, every other week. So let's yeah. keep him lifted up in prayer. Amen. Also, my mom went to the hospital by ambulance the other day. So talk to her today. She's doing a little bit better. But she has that COPD and emphysema that she's been dealing with for 25 years now. Right. But uh, uh, let's, let's pray that God touches her body and, and returns her home. Praise God. Any, anybody else with a prayer request, brother? Yes, yeah, so let's pray for Sister Anita and Brother Don. Pray for Heather. She's got a procedure she has to go through tomorrow where they put needles in the, through her neck to put in her spine. But I just, one little move and they could go wrong. She could be crippled for life. But so let's just as pray long as Jesus is let's there, pray that those amen. Are guided. Yes, praise God. Anybody else with a prayer? Brother Charlie? Yes. She was in ICU. They yes. were disconnecting all that stuff of the machine. Well, now she's out of ICU. She's uh, waking up and she's in a regular room. Amen. That's how Praise God. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. Any, anybody with a with a prayer request? Pray for uh, one guy. Today I received the, the letter of the Bible. He has played, he say he's talking to me. I know, I know nice in my body because I use it too much drugs. I come in uh, the Puerto Rico here. I live in here now. Yeah. But we pray for liberation. 
Amen. For salvation. Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Anybody else with a prayer request? Hallelujah. Let's pray for Brother Charlie. Brother Charlie's going to have a procedure in the, in the near future. Uh, so let's pray that everything goes well yes. with that which we know it will, Charlie. God's with you. Praise God. Pray for my children, too. Let's pray for all our children. Grandchildren. Yes. Praise God. My son that was here, he broke his toe the other day. <laughs> I don't know how, but he broke his toe, so be praying for him. <laughs> Amen. You had your hand raised in the back there, sir? Yes. I can't hear you. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Let's pray for all the different churches and ministries that are out there. Amen. Yes. Let's pray for one another. Look around. See who's here tonight. Let's pray for one another tonight. Amen. Get somebody in your mind that God touches them physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually. Amen. Let's pray for all our different families. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. You know Amen. The Bible says, enter his courts and gates with praise and thanksgiving. Yes. Right, let's thank him. Let's not complain. Uh -huh. Let's not scream and yell. Uh -huh. Let's not kick and holler. Let's just thank him for what he's done. Praise his holy name. Thank him for what he's about to do for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We talked about the power of, of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise. Hallelujah. Paul oh, yeah, Silas of the Midnight Hour. Yes. They didn't they complain. Didn't they nope. The manifestation of God appeared when they were praising oh, yeah, him. The amen. Bible says he inhabits the, 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 the praises of his people. Amen. The artist. So let's praise him. Let's thank yes, him. He does. Let our request be known unto him. Amen. Praise God. Right. And the Bible says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Amen. We don't have that. We don't have that. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand and pray as God gives you utterance. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, tonight oh, sí, for each señor. and every one that's here, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for our singers. I thank you, Lord, for our musicians. I thank you, Lord, for all the members of the churches, Lord God, the churches that are here, several different churches, Lord God. But the reality is there's only one church, Lord God. Just one church, Lord, we come honoring you, praising you today, Lord God, giving you all praise and all glory today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, we worship you today. A Lord, we honor you today, Lord God. Lord, Lord remember en those that are sick, Dios Lord God. Continue to touch, Sister Mary, Lord God. Lord, Lord touch her mind, her body, her spirit, Lord. I pray, Señor, Lord, for doing this, Lord. Lord, I pray the same for Brother Lord. Lord, 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 para I que thank tú continúes bendiciendo a tu pueblo, Lord. por los I ministerios, Señor, Lord, por nuestros hermanos, Señor, que están en proceso de operación. Señor, toca, Padre, su parte afectada de su estómago, Señor, y desaparece, Señor, todo aquello, Padre, que lo atormenta, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús, Padre Santo, para gloria de tu nombre, tú eres médico por excelencia, Señor, aleluya, sabemos que tú puedes hacer grandes milagros para que la fe de cada uno siga creciendo, Señor, y sigamos glorificando tu nombre, Señor, fortaleza sobre mi compañero, Dios mío, Mío. Lord, pray, espíritu Lord, de clamor, espíritu de obediencia, espíritu de santidad sobre tu pueblo. Sigue operando maravillas y milagros, Señor, en cada corazón. Ayúdanos a esforzarnos y darnos la fortaleza en el nombre de Jesús. Aleluya. Oh, sí, Señor, toca a nuestras hermanas, Señor, en esta mañana. Padre, glorificate en su vida, Señor. Oh, glorificate, Rey de Gloria, Señor. Oh Dios mío, mira los que están ausentes de esta tu casa de oración. Extiende tu mano sobre ellos. Tócalos y dale fortaleza, Señor. Y ayúdalos a continuar. A tu casa de oración, Señor. Aleluya, creemos, Padre. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've already done. We thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. We thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. In your mighty name, Jesus. Brother Charlie, will you come on up and take up the offering, and then we're going to let the singers and musicians take off here, praise God, and do what they do. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Heavenly 
Father, thank you for another glorious day. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we need you, Lord, and you Jesus. are in us. We are the church, and whatever we go, we should shout your name, Jesus, Jesus, because Amen. he is our love, our provider, you, our savior, and everything else. Thank you for the offering. But either way, whoever uh, has some offering good, if not, it's fine too. You, all, you know everything, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, sweet Jesus. Gloria a Dios. Aleluya. Gloria, gloria al que vive. Aleluya. Hay poder en Jesús. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Thank you, Lord. Gloria a Cristo, aleluya.
little bit over here. That's three. But for the blood. <laughs> I had no one to think How I long to hide my face I was so ashamed For all the wrong I had done And I knew I had to take Oh, I was bound
que vive, aleluya. Good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We had a great service in the, our church today. Well, I say it's our church. It's been going there for years. Ever since it's been started, it's been many years. I don't know how long since we've been there. So I'm going to sing, He's God. You know my favorite. Well, He's God on that platform. I ain't got it right, y'all. Well, He's God on that platform. He's my boyfriend. Blessing, Sister Jackie. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got one more. Sanctuary. Gloria Cristo. Hallelujah. You boys can handle this. Yeah, we handle it better with you. <laughs> it's sanctuary. Jesus. Lord, prepare. Thank you. Thank you. 
Sí, Señor, bendice tu siervo, Señor. Aleluya. Gloria a Dios, aleluya. Gracias, Señor. Te adoramos, Jesús, aleluya. Gloria al Rey que vive, aleluya. Bendito seas para siempre, Señor. Gloria, gloria a Dios. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Gloria, gloria a Dios. How many people enjoy the songs and the music? Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Gracias, Señor. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Gracias, Jesús. Let me let me share something with you before we get our Bibles out tonight. We know that all Scripture is inspired of God. Sometimes I have people say, well, the scripture that we have, those, those were done by old folks, old people of old. There was an old moral at the time, an old way of living at the time. But the Bible tells me that those scriptures were inspired of God. Yes. You know, every word, every word from the first in the beginning to the last day in the Revelation was inspired by God Almighty. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light for my path. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Hebrews 4, 12, For the word of God is quick, it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Praise you, Jesus. The story I share every few months, I'm going to share tonight. There was a young lad that was about to graduate high school years ago. He was being raised by a, a single father. The mother had passed away. The father worked a job and two jobs that time to make ends meet. Raised that boy in a godly way. They went to church. They didn't have a whole lot like the other people in the neighborhood, but they had enough to get them by. But this son, this son wanted a car, and he said, Dad, all my friends are going to get a brand new car. They're going to get a brand new car for graduation, and I want a car. He told the father exactly what he wanted, what color, and what color he wanted, the roof and the interior and all the whistles and bells. And he had his heart in getting that car, Sister Peggy. Bless him, Lord. Every time they had dinner, Pops, this is what I want. This is what I want that car. I know that you'll get me that car for graduation. All the other boys, all the other girls are getting a car for the graduation. Time came for graduation, and they were having a little party, nothing fancy, just hot dogs and hamburgers out back and some macaroni salad for the few relatives and the few neighbors that did come. A few of the boys that came to the graduation party were showing off their new cars. Look what my parents got me. Look what I got. I got a new car. But that boy had his heart in receiving that car. He started to look down the road, and he didn't see the car. He looked the other way. No car. No car around at all. And he, he was getting nervous. All the other kids, he even told the kids, I'm getting a new car. And he said, where's your car? Well, it, it, it's coming. It's coming. I'm, I'm going to get what I want. It, it's coming. Finally, it was almost time to closed the graduation cook-off, the cookout, And the father says, son, I got something to give you. Why don't you come in the house? And as the young man came in the house, there was a small package that was wrapped up in beautiful paper. Jesus. And there was a card. And when he opened up the card, the card said, what you want is in this package. What you want is in here. He didn't know how to take that, so he ripped open the paper. And what he found was a Bible. That boy looked at the Bible in disgust. And he said, you know, old man, Pops, I wanted a car. 
for months and months and months, I've asked for a car. You never said you weren't going to get me a car. All my friends got a car. I told them I was getting a car. I'm so embarrassed I don't have my car. And all you gave me was a Bible. And he took the Bible and he slung it across the room. He said, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. I'm leaving. And he left the house at 18 years old and he never returned. Over the years, the father would try to contact his son. And he started to hear that his son went to college. And his son became a successful businessman. But the son would never take the calls of the father. Finally, this young man, working the land and becoming wealthy in his own way with his business, had a beautiful office, a secretary. His secretary comes in and says, you got to get on the telephone. It's about your dad. He says, I told you years ago, I don't want nothing to do with that old man. I don't want to hear anything about that man. But you don't understand, it's a hospital trying to reach you about your dad. He gets on the telephone and there's a doctor and the doctor is saying, your father is dying. Lord. As we're speaking, he's dying. Lord, if you need to see him or want to see him and you were the only one to, to, uh, to contact, please come immediately. Amen. The young man hang out, hang out, hung up the phone and he said, you know what? The least I can do is go visit the old man. He got in his car and he rode down to the hospital, but as he got up in the elevator, he had this sense of fear had come upon him and he already knew before he got to the room the blanket, the sheet was pulled over the father's head. The father had died. He never got a chance to say, forgive me. He never got a chance to say, I'm sorry. He never got a chance to say, I love you one last time. He missed that chance. He found out later in the father's will that the only property he had was that old house that he had left years ago and the father had left him the house and everything belonging in it and around it. He walked in that house and he said everything was exactly the same. The pictures were still there. The old desk was still there. The old TV was still in the corner. Everything was the same. He went up into his old room that he had as a child. There was a globe still there. The little airplane still hanging from the, from the ceiling. His desk was still there, but there was one thing different. That Bible that he had tossed many years ago was sitting on his desk. That same Bible that he threw away, Sister Peggy, was sitting on his desk. And that little note that he had on the outside of the wrapper that said, everything you want is in here, was on top of that Bible. The young man picked up the Bible and he started to flip through some pages and there was an envelope in it. He proceeds to open up the envelope and in the envelope, it was a title to a brand new car that was now many years old. Not only was it a title to a brand new car many years old, there was a key, a single key in that envelope. See, he wanted a car all along. And the father said, what you want is in here. His car was there. Well, he starts, so he starts, starts, in a frantic starts wondering what's going on here. And he goes out back and they had an old shed that they kept an old fishing boat that had not been used in years. As he goes out to that old shed and he forces the door open, there's a tarp next to the boat. Something else is there. And he pulls back that tarp. And the same car with the bells and whistles and the color that he wanted, Brother Herschel, was there. His father did get in that car. His father did get in that car. His father was right. What he'll ever need is in, there. Is in here. Amen. You want to get your life right? Get into the Word of God. Amen. Get a scripture. There is something for every problem, every situation, yes, every hallelujah. circumstance. Brother John, there's, there's an answer in here. These are promises to us as his, as, his, as his children. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Whatever you need is in here. Get a scripture and, 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 and take it into your heart. Hallelujah. It's good to come to church. It's good to hear the preacher. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. But yes. get a scripture for healing. Get a scripture for deliverance. Get a scripture for a sound mind. And hold on to it. Alabado sea Dios. 
Put it into your mind. Put it into your soul. Amen. And repeat it over and over and over until it becomes part of you. Whatever you need is in here. Amen. You need healing? Amen. It's in here. Amen. Because Jesus is coming through here. Amen. You need deliverance? It's in here. Amen. You need a sound mic? It's in here. Amen. Everything you need is in God's holy word. Amen. And how many people know that this is the truth? Amen. Oh, this is the truth. Amen. You know, stand up with me. Hold up yes. your Bibles and repeat after me tonight. Repeat with conviction. We repeat with Amen. boldness. This, this, this is my Bible. My Bible. This, this is the truth. The, truth. the whole, the whole truth. truth. Nothing but Nothing the but truth. truth. This is the very word of God. God. Jesus is the word. This is the good the news. Word. The good report. The sound doctrine. This is the believing. Stand on. Live by and trust in. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. The word of God is mighty. Amen. The word of God will get you out of depression. The word of God will get you out of trouble. I said this morning, you know what? Sometimes we'll get our hands and knees and pray and I'll pray and I'll pray and I'll pray. And, I'll pray. and sometimes things will get better. Sometimes things will get worse. Amen. Sometimes I'll fast and sometimes things will get better and things will get worse. But you know what? I said it earlier this morning. I said it a little bit tonight. You know, he inhabits the praise of his people. But if we can do what Paul and Silas did, is that no matter how we feel, let's not go by how we feel. Let's start giving him praise. Let's start giving him glory. You start singing a song. You know why we sing songs and play the music? It's to get us in the right frame of mind, the right spiritual frame of mind. Give praises unto him. Sing praises to him. Amen. Honor him. Glorify him. Yeah. And when you start doing that, it can be the midnight hour like Paul and Silas and the foundation of the prison starts to shake because they were singing. They weren't complaining. They weren't griping. They weren't even praying that night. They were giving glory to God. God, we don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to give you praise anyhow. We're going to give you glory anyhow. We're going to give you honor anyhow. Bless and we're going to praises to you. Amen. And here's what will happen. The people that were there, the people that were there, talk about being a witness. They don't know if their life is going to be taken tomorrow. Paul and Silas didn't know, but they knew one thing. God hosts tomorrow, but right now, we're going to give him praise. Amen. We're going to give him glory. We're going to give him honor praise, and praise Jesus. God. And they sang praises to God and all the other people, they could have been murderers, rapists, thieves, whatever. They look with amazement and say, you know what? We don't know what this is about, but there's something that's here tonight. Amen. The foundation Hallelujah. is shaking. The bones are breaking. Hallelujah. The stalks are coming off. The doors are open. Yes. We can run. But you know what? Even the sinner, man, or woman is affected by the praise of God. They're looking at you and that power, that praise that comes forth. They're touched by that. They may not understand it, but they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to stick around. I'm going to see the rest of the story. I want to know, Sister Pat, what's going on. I want to see what's going on. Why did this happen? We ain't leaving either. We know the rest of the story. Amen. The jailer. That jailer thought they were escaped and he was going to take his own life. And through the revelation of God, he didn't take his life. Is he about to touch? put the sword in his body to stab himself. Paul cries up, we're all here, don't harm yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> and listen to what the jailer said. This is something miraculous. All these men, Paul and Silas, they could have left. All of them could have left. Not one person left. There's got to be something to this God they sang about. There's got to be something about this God they gave praise for. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Amen. Call on the name, believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus. There's power in the word of God. There's power in praise. You know what I was reading, and I read this a long time ago in Ecclesiastes 8, 4. Listen to this. Where the word of the king is. There is power. There is power. When you speak God's word, there is power. Amen. Jesus fought off the devil with scripture. He fought off the devil with the word of God. Reading out of Deuteronomy. It's quoting Deuteronomy. 
Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. I was well, not God. No, I'm not God, but God dwells in me. God dwells in you. And we are a child of living God. So we can speak his word. We have been given authority to speak his word. Gloria. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Amen. I come today, you can say to the gates of hell, to the enemy of depression, the enemy of sickness, the enemy of addiction, the enemy of disease, the enemy of affliction. I come today not with my own power, with the power that's been given to me. I come with the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. I come with the power to speak his word over death. Bless I come Lord. with his word to speak life. Praise God. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Is not my word as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks into pieces. That's exactly what his word does, brother John. <laughs> Isaiah 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's not just the knowledge, it's the wisdom and the understanding of that knowledge. Amen. Get into the word of God. Read it. Yes. Have it become part of you. Have it become part of you. See, many people don't get into the word of God. And the word of God don't get into them. That's right. It's nice to come to church to feel good and feel the goosebumps and feel the presence of God. But we know the word. Amen. You know Jesus that we're not alone. Right. We know the word. The shepherd is with us. Amen. We know the word. God dwells inside of us. We know the word. We got nothing to be afraid of. That's right, bro. Lord, no matter what happens, let your will be done. Not my will, but your will, precious Lord. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you can't find faith and have faith if you don't know what God has promised. You got to know what's inside the word of God. Oh, I'm going to share this. and I'll, This isn't the preaching. I'm going to share this and we'll get into the preaching. Years ago, I got me a, a phone. It was my first smartphone. How many people know our phones are smarter than us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I had to run back to the church. We had a church van at that time. In fact, we got from Brother Monday. And I had my GPS, and I used it for work. And I still got those old red book maps. You know what I'm talking about when you used to look oh, at yeah. stuff. And I had to go down to Amish country. I said, I got to go. I don't have a map for that area. And I go go to take it, get my GPS. And Tabitha said, Dad, you already got it. I said, no, no, it's in, it's in the van. She goes, no, you got a GPS in your phone. I said, I don't have a GPS in my phone. She goes, you have an app. I saw it. it's already on your phone. You already have it. Yeah. I said, what do you mean I have it? She goes, look here. And she says, where are you going? I said, well, county rap, blah, 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 blah. And she types it in. She goes, look. Turn left. I'm going, I already got it. Amen. I mean, I don't have to go get the GPS. I already got it in my phone. Amen. But see, you don't know what you got. <laughs> if you have an understanding of what you got, Blessed Lord. You, you know, it's not going to do you any good. Exactly. So come to church. Hear the preacher. Hear the teacher. But then get into the Word of God. Amen. Get into the Word of God so the Word of God can get into you. Praise God. Thank you. I don't know where that came from, but we'll take it tonight. Praise God. <laughs> that way we can walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. Amen. If you will tonight, turn to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Thank you, sweet Jesus. I'm going to turn there myself. Three, right? Yes. Three. Yes. Proverbs 3. Yes. Verse. We're going to start with verse 1. Proverbs 3, 1. Say amen when you're there. Amen. amen. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. In order to know God's commandments, you have to know God's commandments. Amen. In order to know God's promises, you've got to know God's promises. Yes. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Let not mercy Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Amen. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet in thy heart. Take his words, his promises, and his commandments, the statutes. Put it on your heart, people. For it says, so shalt thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Five, 
Most of us know this by heart. Trust. Say trust. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not, not on thy own understanding. understanding. In all ways acknowledge him. And he shall, and he direct, shall direct your, path. your paths. Yes. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28 that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. And they're called according to his purpose. Praise God. God is with you always. He knows he knows the whole story. He knows Amen. what's going to happen past, future, and, uh, and, and actually he knows the present. The Bible says he's on the um, which means he has all power. He's on the present, which means he's everywhere at the yeah. same time. And he's on the essence, which means he's all knowing of the past, the present, and the future. Praise God. Tonight, turn to Genesis 22.1. Twenty-two one tonight, praise God. Sometimes when we have something bad happen to us, our children, our families, we do get distraught, we do get disappointment, we do get hurt, we get fear, as we should not, because God's with us. But he will always provide an answer for us. Amen. Genesis 22, 1. And I'm going to read a little bit here and bear with me. And it came to pass after these days that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. When God calls you, be ready. Behold, Amen. here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. He probably didn't have an understanding. I know I wouldn't. God promised him a son, and he waited 25 years for that promise, and he got the son. He changed his name to Abraham, which means the father of many nations. Amen. He didn't say, you're going to be the father of many nations. You are the father of many nations. So how can you be the father if you're going to sacrifice his son? But he's going to be obedient. He's going to be obedient to God. Verse 3 says, And Abraham arose in the early of the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and played the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place which God had told him. For it says, On the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Listen to this, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. He didn't know what was going to happen. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm going to have to sacrifice my son, but I know one thing. My son's got to live for the promise of God to be true, and God is, is truth, and his word is true. Yes, it is. I don't know if he's going to bring him back. I don't know how he's going to do it, but see, we can't lean to our own understanding. Right. we got to trust God. He'll get us through. Amen. we got to trust God. He'll get us through. He said, we're going to come back. We're going to come back. 6 says, And Abraham took the wood and burnt offerings and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire and his hand and a knife. And they, they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And 9 says, And they came to a place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and laid wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar of wood. Can you imagine what was going through that young man's mind? I'm being bound. I'm being put on here. I'm going to be the sacrifice. But Abraham, being obedient to God, did this in sin. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Now here's why it's important to have an ear to hear what God is saying. Abraham stopped, and he said, Here am I. Here am I. And 12 said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad. 
neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, and seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, beheld, Behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh and said, Unto this day in this mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And that means Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And God did provide, didn't he? And the angel of the Lord called up unto Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, Myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sands which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of the, his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. There's a lot of different ways to preach this message, but what I'm getting at tonight, Abraham's about to put the dagger in his son's mm -hmm. chest. But Brother John, God had a different plan. Dios. Years before they went up on that mountain, Jesus. there was a mother ram that gave birth to a ram. Remember, God didn't say just go to any mountain. I'm going to show you which mountain to go to. See, God knows the rest of the story. When we're looking through a photo album, we just see what's happening at one point. You're watching a movie. And they used to have TV series, that they, and they would have cliffhangers where the star would be falling off of a cliff, and it would stop and say, stay tuned for next week. And you'd have to come back next week to watch what happened. Did he go off the cliff or what happened? And we know that the, if he was a star, he normally caught something or a rope or, or a branch or something when he fell off. Or somebody caught him. But you know what? We look at the worst. This can't be what's happening. This can't be happening to our family. This can't be happening to my health. This can't be happening to, to us. What's going? I don't understand this, God, but I know that I don't have to understand. I just need to trust in you. So I'm going to put my trust in you. And God provided. He provided a ram in the thicket. He had that ram grow up to become a large ram. And, and that ram, he guided. God guided that animal to go to that particular place, that particular mountain, to climb up that mountain. So as, as Isaac and as Abraham are climbing up one side, guess who's climbing up the other side? The ram is climbing up the other side. God will provide. Amen. God knows what's going to happen. He had that, land, that ram born for a reason. Amen. That ram came up. And that ram, that just didn't get near them. That ram, that ram got caught in a thicket. That thicket grew because God allowed it to grow. Amen. He put circumstances together. He yeah. put situations together. Yeah. We may look at something like it doesn't mean anything. It's just a thicket. It's just a ram. But that ram got caught in the thicket. He provided. He provided, yeah. praise God. I want you to say, I got a ram in the thicket. I got a ram See, in the thicket. if you wait for something, God is going to provide it. Amen. Sister Sherry, you got a ram in the thicket. Brother Herschel, you got a ram in the thicket. Brother Charlie, you got a ram in the thicket. Sister oh. Jack, 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 you got a ram in the thicket. Amen. We just need to look. Oh. Sometimes we don't understand what's happening, but God will provide. He's got a ram in the thicket. Hallelujah. You know, let's, let's, let's go into history a little bit. There's a little short guy called... Uh, Sacher, uh, uh, Zacchaeus, he's, he's a chief, he's a chief uh, publican, a chief tax collector, a little short guy in stature. He heard about this Jesus. And God put the right people in his path to say, hey, Jesus is coming down the road. You know that guy we heard of? Jesus, he's coming down the road. He put people in the path. See, God will provide. He'll lead you and guide you. So, so, so Zacchaeus says, you know what? I want to see this Jesus guy. I want to see what he's all about. He's coming down, and there's a crowd there. But see, many, many years before, many, many years before, God knew what was going to happen. So what he did is he had somebody plant, or we planted on his own. He got a sycamore tree and planted the little seedling there. Maybe it was just a little seed, and that sycamore tree started to grow and grow and grow and grow. God knew that Zacchaeus was going to be there. 
God knew he was going to be there at the right time. So here comes Zacchaeus, and there's a crowd of people around. I can't see this Jesus. How can I see Jesus? I want to see Jesus, praise God. There's a sycamore tree, so I'm going to climb the sycamore tree. That was Zacchaeus' ram in the thicket. Amen. That was Zacchaeus' ram in the thicket. God will provide. Amen. Sometimes we just say it was luck. There was a tree there, John, and I climbed in to see Jesus. Don't you understand that that tree was put there by Almighty God? And don't you understand that the people you heard about, that told you about Jesus, was already influenced by the Spirit, praise God. Amen. Being there at the right time. Flying Barmas, we know the story about him. Brother Charles preached him a little bit the other night. Crying out to God when they didn't want him to cry anymore. But he didn't listen to man. He cried that much harder, didn't he? But you know what? He had to be at the right place at the right time. It was a coincidence. It was God. It was Jesus. Amen. Right Amen. Jesus guided him somehow to be in that particular alleyway, that particular roadway, Jesus. praise God. And he had already heard about Jesus. See, people, God uses you as, your, as his mouthpiece, as your hands and feet. Don't feel that your testimony, don't feel that your witness is not that important. Because when you speak, People, someone will hear. Yes. Someone will hear. So someone was speaking about the miracles. Amen. Miracles. It might have not even been to, to blind Barmaeus, but he heard about other people getting that lost their eyes that they could see, that the, the, the lame could walk and the, and the deaf could hear. He raised the dead. Glory He's probably Dios. saying, man, i got to meet him. Sí, señor. This has got to be the Messiah. This has got to be God. Amen. If I can only meet him. And somehow he's on the right road influence to get there, a maneuver to get there. As the crowd is going by, they're screaming, they're screaming. And he hears about the master coming, praise God. Hallelujah. That was blind Barmaeus, ram in the thicket. Amen. See, you got a ram in the thicket. You may not know how they're going to come through, but God has already provided. Amen. Well, I don't have it yet. Have faith. I don't see it yet. We, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Amen. Just keep praying. Just keep asking. Just keep knocking until you get it. Well, how long do I keep knocking? You knock forever if you have to. How long do I keep asking? You ask forever if you have to. How long do Amen. I keep seeking? You seek until you find, praise God. Amen. We give up too soon today. We look for a little bit and we stop. We seek a little bit and we stop. We ask a little bit and we stop. We quit knocking. Sometimes we pray for things. I prayed for things for many, many years. It hasn't transpired yet. But I still have hope. I still have hope. I still have hope. We had a lady that would come here. She went to another church, but she'd come here in some of the services. And she waited 38 years for her husband to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They said she had a terrible marriage. This man was mean to her. He was as mean as a junkyard dog. I'm not going to mention her name. Um, uh, some of you will know who I'm talking about. He was a mean man. But she'd take her kids and she'd go to church every week. But she kept praying for him. But thank God he didn't lose his life in the meantime, Brother Herschel. No. Because after 38 years, one day he said, he put on his jacket and he says, right. I'm going to go to church with you. It's like, what? Right. I'm going to go to church with you. He goes to church, Sister Jackie, and he gives his heart to Jesus Christ. A few years after that, he passed away and went on to be with the Lord. But you know what? God knew. God knew what was going to happen. He knew this man was going to give his life to him. But you know what that woman did? She just kept praying and praying and praying and praying and never stopped. For 38 years. Abraham and Sarah, 25 years. Glory. Daniel, 21 days. Amen. We wait one hour and we give up on it. God's got that ram in the thicket for you. But you have to keep believing, keep going. What if Abraham didn't go to that right mountain? What if he didn't listen to God? What if Abraham wasn't going to put Isaac up for a sacrifice? What if Zacchaeus looked at the crowd, and sometimes we've got to get to the flesh, and it's our flesh and the flesh around us, and he's looking at the crowd saying, the crowd's too big. I'm going back. I wanted to see him, but I'm going back. He didn't take, he, he, that was, he wasn't going to hear that. I'm going to get to him. There's a tree. I'm climbing up the tree. 
that was this ram in the thicket. Paul and, Paul and the ship is being torn up. The promise of God was that nobody would be lost. There would not be one hair lost. The ship represented safety. The ship represented security. And the ship hits and tears to pieces. The storm tears into men into little pieces. That beautiful ship, that security of all those soldiers and men and, and even the prisoners too was no longer there. You see, God provided a ram in the thicket. The Bible says they took the boards and they swam to shore on those broken pieces of board. What what you swimming on? This is my ship. It's a board. There's a broken piece of wood, but this is all I got now. But you know what? That's all I need to get me to go to where I belong and where I need to go. That was their ram in the thicket. You all are going through something in here. We, you know what? You don't have to. I'm not even going to go there. Lord, forgive me. I remember a, a young lady came up to me years ago and a young man says, these people, we were, we were going through some problems. I said, really? Yeah, we were going through some marital problems. We had some problems, you know, other problems at home. I said, you probably got some money problems too. We do. And we got problems. Pro we do. How did you know that? Did God reveal that to you? No, your face did. <laughs> Everybody is going through a situation. Amen. Amen. Everybody in here, and I don't have to be a prophet, but no. everybody's going through a situation, including myself. If I ask, let's raise hands, of who's going through a situation? Some of you lay on your back and lift up both hands and both feet. Sometimes we have a lot of situations we're going through. But here's the thing. The promise of God, he's always with us. He's never going to leave us. Amen. We're going to lean on his understanding. Let's hear what we've done, Lord. And you know what? He's got a ram in the thicket for you. He's got a ram in the thicket for you. Sister Jack, he's again got a ram in the thicket for you, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's got a ram in the thicket for you, Brother Ken. He's got a ram in the thicket for you, Jose. Amen. And you know what? Praise be to God. He's got a ram in the thicket for this Hallelujah. old boy, too. Amen. We just got to keep hanging on and keep trusting. Praise God. Into his understanding. And you can be honest with God. Say, God, I, I smile lots of saying, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to be done. But I don't know what's going to be done. I don't know how I'm going to get through, but I know you'll get me through. I'm going to end it with this. I was sharing to a few people last week. I went to a church, and we got some of our new pictures and paintings, and this church truly blessed us. I bought some merchandise from them, and they donate a lot of merchandise, Brother Hersher. And this was the most beautiful church I have ever been into in my entire life as a child, as an adult. Amen. I never saw a church this set up, this miraculous and this beautiful. They had a, the pastor's office was probably half the size of our sanctuary. Uh, they had a bridal room, which they called a room. It was a big giant hall where the bride could go in and have her own restrooms and get ready for wedding. They specialized in weddings there. and the, the, All the lady friends could go in there. They had a reception hall for for the marriages that were as big as our entire church. They had a full-size baseball field at behind the church. They had a full-size gymnasium there. They had a store that they sold brand new tapes and, and videos and so on. They had a daycare. See, God's church would never fail. Amen. And this is God's church. But the church was closing because of money. Now, I'm not glorifying the devil. I'm going to glorify God with this. The woman put her head down and she said, it took us 40 years to build this thing. 40 years to build this church. And we ended up selling it before we lost everything to the local hospital, Southwest Hospital. And we're going to merge with a much smaller church and they already have everything they need, so that's why we got to get rid of everything. The good thing is our son just got out of seminary school. He's going to be the head pastor there. But his daddy was no longer going to be pastor. And his dad was a good man. Yes, he was. And when my second trip back to their church, I had an unction. There were several other people, ministers from other churches that came just to kind of say bye and farewell. I had an unction to pray. 
And I talked about that ship being torn up that Paul was on. And I said, you know what? It may seem like the ship is torn up. It may seem like this big, beautiful church is no longer here. But you're still here, and you have to remember, you are the church. It's not the building. It's not the building at all. You are the church. And wherever you go, the church is going. And wherever you go, the light is going, because that light lives within you. And we had a prayer, and I, I just felt that we needed to lift them up. Amen. See, we don't know where God's taking us sometimes. No, we don't. But we lean on his understanding. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. But no, I'm going to follow. Amen. I'm going to follow. Lord. But your will be done. Praise God. And Lord, I know that you've got a ram in the thicket somewhere. Amen. you got a ram in the thicket somewhere. you got a ram in the thicket somewhere. A few weeks ago, we had lost somebody. I went on to be with the Lord that I knew. And uh, they said, we had everyone praying. But God took them. I said, you know what? They're still a winner. Yeah, winner either to way. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I believe that. Amen. We are a winner either way. See, even for that person that was facing death and did have death as far as their body was concerned, the, the, the Christian never dies. God still had a ram in the thicket. Amen. Can you imagine closing your eyes for the last time, Brother Charles, and you open them up and they're in the presence of Almighty God as Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Praise God. Yes, Brother Charles, it. he's not going to die. He's just going he's gonna to be like Enoch. He said. He's just going to be walking. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be walking to get a cup of coffee. They'll be patting. He'll turn around and say, Honey, Wait a you want a cup of... And all of a sudden, the cup of break. He's gone. He's gone. Wouldn't that be marvelous, though? Amen. Wouldn't it be great? That should be all our goal. I don't know. I'm not making fun of it. He, he he said he says this. I've heard him say it a number of different times. He wants to be like Enoch, where he's just walking and God takes him. Yeah. So people say, "Well, yeah, that ain't gonna happen." You know what? Jesus is saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. If it happened then, it can happen again. Amen. If it happened once, it'll happen twice or many times. Amen. That should be all our goal to say. How do we get that? Well, it's not just, just saying I love God. It's walking with him, being like him, being in agreement with him. How can two walk together if they disagree? But if you if your thinking lines up with God's thinking and you're walking with him and saying, man, wouldn't it be great to have to say, you know what? You're so close to me. Man, you, you, you just do everything like I do, Brother Hershey. Come on. Charles is already there. <laughs> and he's gone. Now, that's a goal. Yes, that's a goal. They didn't see death. God took them. Hallelujah. <laughs> you always have, I told that to some young. Well, do where did God take them? Wherever He is. <laughs> Wherever He is. Amen. Praise God. I pray tonight. See, I'm already being shut up. If you say, "Be quiet." Zip it up. <laughs> if I say any more. Uh, it's going to be just corny stuff that, uh, that's, that that's not of God, and, and God doesn't want that. So to respect God, God has already brought the message tonight. The message is, you got a ram in the thicket. All of you got a ram in the thicket. There's an answer coming, Sherry. There's a ram in the thicket, girl. Amen. We got one just yes. waiting there. God has already planned this before. He already knew what was going to happen before you were even born. Think right. about that. He knows all, praise God. Yeah. He knows all. I'm going to have that mountain there. I'm going to have that thicket there. I'm going to have that little baby ram be born, that baby ram grow up to be a big ram, and that ram come up the side of the mountain. And then I'm going to have, I'm going to have Isaac and Abraham come in this side of the mountain. And then let's see, I got another, I got another one, Zacchaeus. I, I got to make sure I got a tree, and I got to get that tree close enough to the roadway that when Jesus walks by, you know, he'll be able to see Jesus in that tree. Amen. And we can go on and on and on in the Bible. I got to make sure that when the crowd comes through, the crowd will be all around Jesus and, and the woman with the issue of blood. I got to make sure that she knows and hears that Jesus is coming down the road. So I'm going to make sure they make enough noise and all that, you know, crying out to him. And, and she's going to she's gonna come on out with faith and say, no, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Santo eres 
Even Martha and Mary had a ram in the thicket. Amen. Our brother is dead. But God had a ram in the thicket. And here he says, Lazarus, come forth, and out hops Lazarus. Praise God. A ram in the thicket. We all rise to Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. Gracias, Señor. Thank you, Jesus.